Hey guys and welcome back to another card review. So we're looking at a really, 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 really old card that has been getting a lot of hype lately. And to tell you the truth, I just don't understand why. I, I, I don't understand. I just don't understand. I mean, there's some plays that I get, but then there's some plays that I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. So today we are looking at spiritualism. So spiritualism is a normal spell card, really old. It reads, return one spell slash trap card your opponent controls to the hand. This card activation and effect cannot be negated. All right. So if you don't know, the winning deck of worlds and uh, probably a lot of other people were citing uh, three of these. And I really couldn't understand why everybody was running the three of these and why all of a sudden this is hyped and now I'm seeing it in a whole bunch of other people's uh, side decks and, and now apparently it's a side deck staple. And I'm just like, why? Why? Because when you look at the cover face value, why? You know, why? All right, let's look. Let's, let's let's look at face value, face value, and then we'll go over some of the plays and stuff that you can do with it. So, you, it's a spell speed one, spell speed one, not even spell speed two. So it's not like you can even like you know, it's not even a quick play spell. You can't like chain it or something. You can't play during your opponent's turn. You can't play it during your opponent's end phase. No, it's only spell speed one. Uh, but it's kind of like a pseudo spell speed four kind of thing because you know. Uh, this card's activation and effect cannot be negated, so it's not like, you know, your opponent can respond to it with anything, but they still can respond to it. So, I, you know, I take back that spell before, and, you know, it's not like Super Poly where you can't activate anything in response. You can. It's just this card's activation and effect cannot be negated. Anyway, you play this card. You take one of your opponent's spells and trap, spell slash traps in their back row and put it back in their hand. And that's it. That's it. Nothing happens. That's it. So, you negged one because, why? Just so your opponent can next turn and can just go ahead and reset it? Like, I just don't, I, I, I just, you know. Now, there's some, there's two reasons why I think I understand why they went with this and why, you know, it's being overhyped. But overall, I just don't get it. I would rather, you know, I'd rather throw the MST at you. I'd rather one for, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do something like that, I'd rather one for one. I don't want you to go ahead and put the card back in your hand. Why? So you could just play it against me next turn and I just, I seriously just neg myself, you know? I guess it's a temporary halt, you know? Uh, uh, you know, it temporarily allows you, and especially if you know what you're doing. And this is where uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain why I think people are playing it, and especially in Worlds. So, as you know, Worlds was won by Infernities. Infernities were some of the biggest problem decks and have still been. And definitely, you know, by hating Infernities uh, with this card, you can actually do some damage. It can actually allow you to go off on, on a play during their turn. So let me explain. Clearly, Infernities is a really good deck. It's always been a really good deck. It's always been tier. It's always topped. And... Uh, I, I would be very surprised if Konami doesn't hit this deck or kill this deck in this upcoming list. I would just be shocked, but that's another that's another schedule for another time. Anyway, Infernities. I believe that five Infernity decks entered in Worlds and three of them topped. So you can clearly see how powerful the deck is. And the thing is that the deck is not that same old Infernities that it was before. This is the new, upgraded, faster, aggressive, OTK, you beat the shit out of you, Infernities. And one of the powerful things about Infernities is that, of course... Archfiend can search for your back row. Now, in the top deck, the deck that won Worlds, the only back row he ran was his one barrier and his three breaks. <coughs> so, of course, when considering on what to hit in the Infernities, you know, there's not a lot of choices, you know. Like, oh, hit the breaks. No, that's not it. Hit barrier. That's not what allowed him to win. Uh, you know, there are some people saying, oh, put Necromancer down to two. He only ran two Necromancer. Uh, so, really, the only things that I... I was, I was pointing the finger at Archfiend. I'm like, okay, we'll hit Archfiend. But I was actually talking to Slate, and you know, I came up with a different idea to hit, but I'm getting off topic. Anyway, of course, you know, with, but by special summoning Archfiend, you get to search those cards. When they search those cards, if you can read where they place, you and they place the barrier, and then they place the breaks, if you use Spiritualism on the barrier, you go ahead and pop the barrier back in the hand. Of course, they can... Uh, uh, this card's activation and effect cannot be negated, so they can't even play the barrier on the spiritualism to block the spiritualism. Therefore, they would still have no cards in hand and be able to play the breaks. No, they can't. So you play spiritualism on the barrier. The barrier gets popped back into their hand. Now, not only do they have the barrier in their hand, they can't play the barrier, but now they have a card in their hand. Therefore, they can't play their breaks. And that's all the back row that they were running. So if you can get around those barriers and their breaks, then apparently you can go ahead and defeat them and, you know, beat their butts, I guess. Now, another thing that I'm assuming is that 
you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, pop uh, their Sanctums or their Morale Attacks back. But no, no, that's not really, because this card activation, this card activation, this card activation effect cannot be negated, but they can still respond to it, because it's only supposed to be one. So even that really wouldn't work. I guess it wouldn't force them to play Sanctum at not the right time, or not play what at the time they want, or you can go ahead and pop a Sanctum back to, so they, you can play this on the Sanctum. They can either play the Sanctum now, and summon, and summon them a Raw Attack and pop a card, even though there may not be pop, cards to pop at the time, or they can just allow the Sanctum to go back into their hand, which they will have to reset it, and, you know, they'll be a turn behind, and, uh, and, you know, you don't have to deal with that Sanctum that turn. But keep in mind, you still are negging yourself. So, you really gotta think, is it really worth it? I think that this card is really just overhyped. I really don't get it. And, 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 and if there's another method to this madness of spiritualism, please explain it to me. Because right now, all we're seeing is just popping back moral attack or popping back uh, uh, Sanctum and either forcing them to play something that they don't want to play at the time or just allowing them to open up just for a turn. Or, uh, you know, the Infernities. In which case, if this upcoming list just completely shuts down Infernities, then I guess this card's not really that good, then, is it? You know, it's a, it's a one-card side. It's a, it's a, you're siding this to beat one deck. and it, One deck. One. One. I just don't understand. That's not really what a side deck is. A side deck, you want to, you know, make sure that it... it sure, if, unless, it, unless you have a tier zero deck, unless there's a tier zero deck, you really shouldn't be siding... And that and committing that many cards to one deck, you know, you you want more versatile cards, and you know that's I, that's all I'm seeing. It's just spiritualism is good against infernities. Okay, so you're telling me that if Konami uh, hits infernities and kills infernities in this upcoming ban list, that this card will not be relevant anymore? You know, it's just like okay. I mean, it's it's a it's a ten cent common. You know. And just because, you know, and that's the thing, I've been seeing a ton of decks side decking it, side decking it, and side decking it. And just because the top decks in Worlds, you know, Worlds, a tournament like no other tournament, you know, they're not, I can tell you right now, the, the decks who are at Worlds, they're not going to come back with the same side deck here, come back to the TCG and TCG night and do that same shit. They're not. Because people don't play Infernities like that here in the TCG. But I'm going to tell you right now, I would be, I would be flabbergasted if Infernities survive. It just... Statistically speaking, it just doesn't make any sense that that would survive. It just doesn't make any sense. Look at the previous decks that have topped worlds. Uh, Frogo TK, uh, TG Agents, Insectors, and Dragon Rollers. Those four decks. Right after they won worlds, what happened to them on that upcoming ban list? They got the D. And, you know, it may not have been enough to, you know, really, you know, kill them, but it made them enough to, you know, for the deck to be, you know, hurt bad. Bad. Even Dragon Rulers, who didn't die, got hurt bad. And Zector hurt bad. TG Agents, they, they lost what? They Earth and TG Striker went down to one, and they didn't move for how long? <laughs> and, uh, you know, Substitute is still banned. So, you know, for de decks that win worlds get hurt bad. I mean, it's just it's set precedent. They get hurt bad. We've already seen that Konami is not afraid to hit Infernities. They thought that, you know, hitting Barrier would be enough. And the reason why, and the funny thing is that. Infernities winning worlds is all Konami's fault. If they would have hit the correct card a long time ago, this would have never happened. Never happened. Never happened. They hit Barrier. Was that the correct choice? No. No, if they wanted to, they should have hit Archfiend. They should have just killed the deck. I don't even know why they allowed the deck to live. Like, this deck is one of the oldest decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And for, to have this old, super old, ancient deck win worlds is just so bad. So bad. So, I was thinking, hit Archfiend. Hit Archfiend, the deck is done. But there's another way where you can kind of hit the deck and not really kill it, but definitely hit it. In which case, by not only putting Soul Charge down to one or banning it, that would hurt, but taking away their their, uh, their Infernity Launcher. And I was actually talking about the like, Slate. You know? the, it's not the back row. Clearly, the deck doesn't do the back row anymore. It's the aggressive summoning. It's the special summoning from the grave. Out-resourcing your opponent. Being up on your opponent. And clearly, clearly, right then and there... That Infernities winning worlds because of Soul Charge, because the deck wouldn't even be really existing without Soul Charge, clearly shows that Soul Charge is broke. I don't know why people are getting to this mentality where, oh, Soul Charge is broken, Soul Charge is broke. It won Infernity Worlds. 
It's not about the life points cost. It's not about the night attack. It's being up on your resource. It's putting your opponent into such a predicament that they can't do shit. And that's what makes Soul Charge powerful. So, at this point, if Konami, I think Konami should ban Soul Charge. I mean, if they want to put it to one, they're going to win, uh, one. Okay, fine. If you want to put Soul Charge to one, then go ahead and ban Launcher. Or vice versa. <laughs> you know, I, vice versa, I still wouldn't care. But, you know, banning, ban Soul Charge, keep Launcher at one, or ban Launcher and put Soul Charge to one. Whatever order combination you want to do, that is what you should do, Konami. But, if you don't, then I would just be flabbergasted. I'd just be like, okay. You, someone, either someone has a hard-on for Infernities up in that big Konami building, or uh, they're planning on giving the deck new support, which I don't see at all. But there, there must be something. I'm a, I would, I would have to be missing something because, yeah. But yeah, this card spiritualism. I got off topic with spiritualism. It's just for infernities. So side deck three Y. Unless I'm missing something. All right. So I just wanted to go ahead and go on this little soapbox rant. But uh, I hope it was still informative slash entertaining. So tell me what you guys think about this card in the comment section below. If I'm missing something, please inform me. So. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting me, and I will see you guys next Tuesday with another card to discuss. Thanks for watching.